Hey yo, what is up guys, Akash here back with another video. Today we are going to take a look at the E32 LoRa 1W transceiver module from eBite. What's special about this module is that it's a 1W powered transceiver module. So you might think previously uh, the Reacts module or the RFM module or the, the famous RFM module which we use a lot in LoRa applications is a 25 milliwatt LoRa module. So you can understand the power of this module. This is not very much expensive. This works on the 4th. 3 megahertz uh, band and uh, it's like around six to ten dollars on aliexpress i'll link in the links of this module in the description below we also made this breakout board because you cannot use the standalone directly with the microcontroller you need some resistors and all and the mode switch as well so we made this breakout board connect this over here and we have another module as well so this is the 100 milliwatt instead of the one watt uh, module uh, these work together fine as well we have other modules as well so i've connected this to a computer right now and this is standalone so for the demo purpose if i send something into this it will come over here and you'll see leds blinking here so if i say hi to this module this led blinks and then this blinks I'll do that again right there and this LED blinks. So we have a packet transfer that's happening between these modules. Uh, we'll see the circuit diagram of these module of these breakout boards. We'll see uh, the specifications of these modules, other availabilities. So let's get started. <laughs> I order all my PCBs from jlcpcb.com. They offer 10 PCBs for $2 only. They also offer quick turnaround time and can produce PCBs as fast as within 24 hours. To design PCBs, you can head over to EasyEDA and then generate Gerber files for your project. Now head over to jlcpcb.com, upload your Gerber files and get the PCBs manufactured for cheap. They are currently also offering discounts on shipping. So these modules come from the company eByte or CDSC Byte. Uh, those are kind of the same companies. You will find these uh, modules on AliExpress. I'll put in the links of these modules in the description below. So eByte is the company selling these modules. These are the E32 ones. So we have two modules here. This is the 1 watt module and this is the uh, 100 milliwatt module so there's a difference in size there's a difference in cost this is uh, like a couple dollars cheaper than this module but this module is like a beast in the LoRa world uh, the e-byte company claims the range of this module to be 8 kilometers but we got a range of 8 kilometers with this 25 milliwatt LoRa module so but this was in line of sight I am sure that uh, maybe this uh, achieves a range of 8 kilometer without line of sight and maybe god knows it can achieve in few tens and maybe it can touch 100 kilometers with line of sight we'll have to do a range test on that but right now yeah this is it talking about the pin out of these things so these have six pins the first one is m0 m1 rx tx aux vcc and ground and there's this metal shield apart from that we have this yellow cap covering the sma terminal so you'll need a antenna over this you can use a good antenna so uh, this is a 12 db 433 megahertz antenna which, so this can fit so you need a sma connector which fits in like this so we uh, we we can use different types of antenna for different ranges this is a bit more expensive than the than this rubber ducky antenna that we have this is a 5 db antenna keeping all that aside and taking a look at the circuit diagram that we need to have to use these modules so this is our e32 lora module and there are these six pins now m0 and m1 are mode pins which i'll talk about in a bit later those need to be uh tied up r1 and there should be two switches so that is what it is then we need the rx and the tx at output so that you can connect to a microcontroller then the ground goes to ground vcc goes to vcc now rx and tx can also have status leds like i have in my board which we'll take a look after a second the auxiliary pin is like a busy state indicator pin for the e32 module so we have attached an led to that as well so we have 
tied all these three pins to the base of a 3906 transistor and then we have some resistors and LEDs and the collector of the transistors are connected to the ground. So this is the circuit that is required to drive a LoRa module. Basically mm, these status LEDs aren't required and this LED is the power LED that we are using. So I took this schematic and laid out a PCB on Easy EDA and got it manufactured from JLC PCB. So I got this package gels from JLC PCB with PCBs and a gift from their side. Okay, that's cool. So these are the PCBs that we got. These are good matte, matte black PCBs. So in this PCB we have a space for putting our LoRa module like this or this one because both the modules have the same pinout you can put it any put any module you like on this and uh, there's this mode switch which we'll talk about right now then there are four leds some resistors and a connector which we'll build in right away but first taking a look at the mode switches for this so we have majorly four modes that is mode 0 1 2 and 3 uh, the most important modes are the 0 mode and the 3 mode. The 0 mode is called the normal mode and the third mode is called the sleep mode. The first mode is called wake up mode and the second mode is called the power saving mode. In this uh, we have the values as 0 0, 0 1, 1 0, 1 1. We will majorly focus on the 0 mode and the 3 mode because in the uh, mostly your module will remain in the 0 mode. 0 mode is the most power hungry. So we will write that uh, as well. So this is the most power hungry mode and as 3 suggests it's sleep mode. So it's the most efficient mode. So in this 3 mode there's no transmission or reception from the LoRa side at all. So LoRa is not active at all in this third mode but the third mode is also called as parameter setting mode. So when you connect your module to the computer or your microcontroller in your project and keep the M1 and M0 pins as high, uh, you can set the parameters for this module and in the zero mode the UART that is the RX and the TX remains always open. Uh, for reception or transmission of signal using LoRa. So power saving mode is a little bit more power efficient than wake up mode. Wake up mode is a little more power efficient than the normal mode. So we have a type of hierarchy. Zero is least power efficient. Then we have a little bit more power efficient, little bit more, little bit more, a lot more maybe. But there's no LoRa transmission or reception happening down in the third mode. In the So we have in these three mode, RX works in all three modes. In this TX also works full time. In this mode TX works full time. In this mode TX is partially open. So it's sometimes open sometimes not depends on the when you wake it up. So you send a message then you send the next message the next message gets transmitted. In this mode TX is not open. So only RX is open and RX is also open partially when you receive a message the first message wakes it up and the second message gets delivered. So that's in the power saving mode. We'll not talk a lot about these two modes in this video. We'll focus on the normal mode and the sleep mode. Coming back to the PCB that we had I soldered this PCB laid out all the components and this is the result that we get. So we get a beautiful matte black PCB with this breakout board so this is like this so we can like atta attach it over here you see the busy LED so talking about the LEDs the first one is the power LED that is on then we have the busy LED then we have the TX LED and then we have the RX LED now remember that the TX and the RX LED here are in reference to the module so if this module uh, wants to send something it lights on the RX LED and not the TX LED so when you send some data uh, to the module using this uh, UART header that we have over here the TX pin will light and not the RX pin so it's the other way around it's a little bit confusing but yeah that's how it is so now what I have done is we got uh, these two uh, both soldered and for variety instead of putting one watt modules on both the boards 
what I have done is I have put the 100 milliwatt over here and then I have hooked it up to a uh, UART that is the FTDI board and I have hooked this FTDI board to my laptop right now. The LEDs of this board are a little bit lighter because I soldered this board first and then took some time like couple of days so my LEDs batch got mixed up so LEDs power is not the same LEDs are different but yeah you can see a little bit light over here and yeah, bear with me for that first I've switched this uh, board to 1 1 mode and moving on to the laptop we see over here uh, the data sheet of this is open with the modes and all and uh, we have this RF setting software that I'll put in the github repository for this project that's uh, that will be linked in the description below as well and over here you see ebyte that's the company name then you can select the correct compo that you have connected your usb to uart converter that's my ftdi chip that's com12 in my case then you need to hit the open port then uh, there's this get parameter option once you uh, click that you get the option of param got that's parameter got you might even see the leds blinking and when you click OK, you will see all the parameters. So we have UART rate, that's the baud rate. Then FEC, parity, fixed mode, air rate, WOR timing. Then the, we have power, we have IO mode, push, pull. Power here is 20 dBm. That is because we have this uh, 100 milliwatt module. So let's do one thing. Let's close this port. I'll uh, switch these modules. So this is the 100 milliwatt module. I'll bring in the 1 watt module over here. So we see that we get the 30 dBm option as well. So 30 dBm is for 1 watt module. Now let's keep this module plugged in right here and let's plug in this 100 uh, milliwatt module over here. From the computer, let's close this port. Uh, also, we can check see if we put this into 00, zero that is the normal mode instead of parameter setting mode, and then we open the COM12 and then we click on get parameter we get the uh, error message as no response from the module so this is very much important that we put the module into one one for parameter setting or getting these settings or setting the parameters from this software so we can close this software now now we can open uh, arduino ide then uh, select the correct com port with the correct baud rate and let's open a serial monitor there it is we should make sure that it's in the normal mode that's the zero zero mode so if i type in any message say hi and i send it we see both the leds on these boards and these boards blink so on this board so the busy led and the tx led blink let's do it again oh, sorry the busy led and the rx led blink on this board and the busy led and the tx led blink on this board let's do that again so we see that the LEDs on this board aren't bright enough. So we see all, but in this board, we see the LEDs are bright enough. This is how we can use these modules right now. I haven't connected this to a serial monitor. I just connected it to a power bank, but you can connect it to a serial monitor. You can uh, do message transfer between these two. Now taking a look at the other variants of these modules and the, taking a look at the manual of this company eByte. So there we have it. Uh, these are the UART modules that we have with us. This is the block diagram they have of this module. So this is the module right here. We have the antenna, we have the mode pins, then the UART pins, the auxiliary pin, which is the uh, busy state indicator pin, then the power pins we have. Uh, and there's this uh, sort of timeline that they have. And that's the E32 that we are using right now. It says LoRa 433 MHz. Then they have other advantages of LoRa. Then they have this chart which says under 433 MHz they have E32, E32, E32. And then E32 TTL 100 and E32 TTL 1 Watt. So this is the E32 TTL uh, 1 Watt. And the other one, the smaller one is the E32 TTL 100 so yeah that's it about that then they have some application goody goody application pictures on their uh, brochure then there's the advantages of narrowband because this is a narrowband communication technique then we see that it's a 433 megahertz full duplex communication so half duplex is when only from one side the data can be sent and the other side is cannot be done simultaneously but in full duplex uh, both the sites can be used simultaneously and then this transceiver for uh, drones and stuff like that 
then we also see modems from this company modems from ebyte now what a modem is that they have this uh, square box in metallic box uh, which consists of this module and it consists of all the circuitry that we made on this board all that and it also consists of a rs485 converter on board so you can directly connect your uh, plc uh, stuff and all your microcontroller stuff using the rs485 or rs232 bus to their modem and you can start using it uh, this modem is a little bit expensive obviously but not much expensive i'll link this down in the description below as well so that's about these modules so yeah that is about it from this uh, lora uh, video and uh, i'll probably make another pcb another project uh, using this circuit knowledge so we'll put maybe an esp 32 or an esp 8266 on that board with this and we'll make a full communication project wherein two uh, standalone boards without this usb converter board so let me know if you're interested in that project in the comments below i'll surely work on that thanks for watching Subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now. Also hit the bell icon to stay notified. This is Akash signing off.